Hello, colorists. Today, we're diving deep down under the sea with this page from Imagimorphia. And along the way, I course correct on a color palette choice midstream and add a little bit of life to our page with some bubbles. And speaking of course correcting, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 28,000 classes in design, art, business, and much, much more. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to classes, communities, and workshops that are just right for you and your learning goals. So whether you want to fuel your curiosity, creativity, or even learn a new skill to further your career, Skillshare is the perfect place to keep you learning and thriving. They have classes on painting, creative writing, photo editing, and so much more. So if you want to improve your knowledge on any topic, Skillshare has a class for you. Join the more than 7 million students already learning on Skillshare today with a special offer just for Pencil Stash viewers. Use the link below in the description to get a two month free trial to Skillshare. Beyond those two months, Skillshare is super affordable with an annual subscription being less than $10 per month. And with all the growth potential that these classes offer, that is a great investment in yourself and your personal development. Act now for the special offer and start learning with Skillshare today. So as I said, this page is from Imagimorphia. I've been coloring in that pop manga coloring book for a few weeks in a row now, so I thought I'd give you all and myself just a bit of a break from it, as variety is always good, especially with coloring. You really don't want to get, you know, just kind of too, too, too stuck in the same kind of book. So it's fun to play around a little bit. Now, the first thing that I did was try to come up with a color palette. And this is what I pulled some golden yellows, some blues, kind of jewel toned purples, and then some mauvey pinks and salmony peachy colors. Uh, I found these all together on a color palette that I found online. And they just looked really lovely all together. So I was all in. And let that actually be a little bit of foreshadowing for you guys as Murphy's Law kicks in in this one in just a little while. Starting on the koi fish, I thought they'd look beautiful in some of these mauve pinks. And I'm going to use two different colors here just as my foundation. And then I'm going to add in some of that deep purple uh, in the shaded areas. It was just really kind of needing a little bit of something else just to kind of punch it up. But even after that, I kind of felt like something was missing, um, but I just kind of couldn't put my finger on it. So I just decided to just kind of leave it, you know, walk away from it, uh, you know, keep keep coloring, you know, maybe it would come to me. Um, you know, it's just kind of better than just starting to experiment. When you don't really know what's wrong with it, you tend to start to experiment. And, uh, you know, sometimes you miss the mark and you end up kind of ruining it just creates a hot mess. So I decided to just kind of continue on with the same vein and then come back to uh, the koi to maybe revisit what was missing later. For the anchor, that part was pretty straightforward. I didn't want to color it in that kind of typical, you know, gray color. I thought it might look a little bit depressing. So I went with gold or kind of a brass tone just to make it stand out a bit as it would be kind of something shiny and pretty that all of these sea creatures would kind of congregate around. Um, obviously, I uh, didn't end up going with this thought, but about halfway through, I did have kind of a fleeting thought that it would be fun to color this as though the sea life had kind of taken it over, maybe with some moss and some algae, you know, put some real grit on it. I think that would be fun and just a bit of a departure for me. Um, so there's some other pages in this book uh, kind of similar. So perhaps I'll do that idea another time. So this one went okay, but again, I thought something was missing on it, and I don't, for the life of me, know what it is. So made another mental note to just kind of keep coloring and come back to it later. Now, one of my absolute favorite things to color in these Kirby Rosane's books is the way that he draws water. It's fun. There's lots of movement to it. And I just really like these kind of flowy little white caps at the top. Uh, now, the Inspiration color palette had a very dark kind of subdued sort of peacock blue tone. So I tried to grab a few pencils that would help me mimic those tones and get the same overall color. And I was just kind of drawn to the fact that it wasn't your typical water blue color. And that was just kind of a big selling feature for me, trying something a little bit new. 
Now, I also love these little chubby kind of multi-leaf leaves in this book. There's a lot of surface area and lines to play with on them. So I went with a few different purples, starting with a real light one. Then with Crayola's Orchid, which is vibrant but not super pigmented, I pushed that color right into the lavender and just got a really nice blend on them. But then when I went in with my dark plum to kind of accentuate those lines here, there it was again. Like something was missing, but I still couldn't put my finger on it. But again, pressed on with the rest of the leaves just to see if maybe that would help me kind of figure it out. And then it came to me. It was boring. <laughs> that was it. Could it really be that simple? Yes, absolutely. My color palette was muted and boring. It just was not doing anything for me. And you all know me. I love, love me a good muted color palette. But for some reason on this page, it just wasn't working. I think there's just too much life on this page, too much movement, too much going on here to give it a boring color palette. It just isn't doing it justice. So big question, how do we fix this? I want to amp up the energy on the page with color. And I thought perhaps we could do that with my Faber-Castell pencils. Since they're all very pigmented, they're fun, they're bright. Um, the other thing that came to me actually was that there's just also way too much uh, stuff here on the page to have such a limited color palette. I would just kind of end up having to repeat the same colors too often. And it would just, you know, again, look a little bit like a hot mess. So I immediately expanded my palette and I grabbed a few greens out of my Faber-Castell set uh, just to, uh, again, expand that palette. And I decided to put these on the tentacles. And once I added these greens, you can really see the difference between these Faber-Castells and some of the Crayola Prismacolors, you know, that I was using before. I mean, they just stand out a mile away compared to the rest of it. So I kind of knew that I was on the right track. And that's not a knock against, you know, any of the you know, types of colored pencils, the Crayolas or the, or the Prismacolors. It's just the colors that I picked, they were very muted, very boring. And, uh, you know, they definitely just, just needed to be amped up a little bit. And I do like the vibrant palette that, I, I, that, that my 60 set of Faber-Castells uh, provides me. Now, the tentacles were actually only on the right side of the page. And I'm always conscious of just trying to balance out the colors across the page as a whole. So I'm actually going to seek out objects on the mirrored side of the anchor to color in these greens as well, which I think will be this seahorse and the little cute little turtle guy here. They aren't as large as the tentacles in terms of just overall surface area, but I'll kind of reevaluate once they're colored uh, just to see if we can, you know, color in something else just to keep it balanced. We can always fill it in. The other nice thing about Faber-Castells is that they go really well right over top of colors that you've already placed down. So I went back in on my purple leaves just to add a few additional little tweaks. Um, so I pushed this mauve color into kind of the little individual leaves as well. And while I didn't do much, it just kind of made a big difference. You can compare it to the others on the page that I haven't touched yet. Um, and you can just kind of see it's, it's subtle what I did, but it somehow made a really big impact, at, at least to me. Do you guys see it? And the blue, I'm going to do the same thing on the blue areas and try to amp those up as well. Now, that was definitely an area that was probably bugging me the most. The blues here were just a little bit too muted. So hopefully this more vibrant color will give us some of that energy that I was looking for. Same thing on the koi. These babies need some reddish orange color to just kind of amp them up. And because that reddish orange is going over already pink tones, um, I think that the color that I kind of ended up with after the layering process really complemented the mauve really nicely. And again, you can see um, on the koi fish that I haven't colored yet, uh, just to see the difference that it made. Now the anchor itself didn't need too much, but again, I just wanted to add some vibrancy just to give an overall, you know, thread uh, throughout the entire page. So I added a little bit of this golden ochre color just to deepen some of these uh, shadows or these shaded areas. <laughs> 
all right, I'm at the point on the page where I don't want to repeat a color family too much, or I'm going to start losing some of the details of these individual animals or objects. So that means I need to add another color. What do you guys think? Maybe orange? I think orange would do it. Now, there's quite a bit left on this page, and thankfully, it's pretty spread out evenly. So I think that these golden orange tones will work for most of the creatures left on our page. There might be a couple outliers where uh, I, I won't color the orange, but we'll just kind of cross that bridge when we get there. Yeah, so see, we've got our little surf buddy and this lobster tail here. Those are outliers in terms of balance. They don't really have a counterpart on the other side of the page. It's not a big deal. They're really small. So we're just going to choose from our pencils uh, that we've already used just to fill those in. Now for the background, since we're underwater, clearly, uh, I think that we could stand to color the background blue two different blues to be exact, and I'm kind of alternating between the two. It'll give us kind of a splotchy appearance that will hopefully mimic water. Now to finish this off, I'm going to blend with a little bit of Gamsol. It'll hide all my pencil marks and it'll just kind of amp up the vibrancy of my blues. Now make sure you're getting kind of most of that excess off your cotton swab too before you put it on the paper. If it's too wet, it'll warp your paper. It'll cause some of the ink from the underside of the page to show through. It's really not a good look. Uh, circular strokes help as well, just to kind of give it again that watery look. And to finish it off, and really just for fun, I'm going to add in some extra bubbles with my white Signo gel pen. And you can either use a circle template like this one, or you can do it by hand, uh, you know, whatever you're more comfortable with. Um, and oh, also, if you don't have one of these gel pens, I definitely recommend this particular brand. It's the Uniball Signo. It really shows up well over top of your colored pencils. I've tried a bunch of different brands, and this one is the one that I, I personally like the best. And I'm just varying the sizes of my circles. You don't want to have them all, all too similar. It's kind of fun just to play uh, with the size there. I'm also keeping them fairly close to kind of our main cluster here. I'm not really venturing too far outside of that into the background. And then just to remain consistent with the rest of the bubbles on the page, I'm gonna encircle each new white dot with a black fine liner. This one's a Sharpie, just to outline them, just to you know give it that look like it was always in the coloring book. And that's a wrap, folks. This page is in the books. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, hit the like button and check out my back catalog of coloring tutorials for even more. Subscribe if you're new and don't forget about that Skillshare link in the description. Bye guys.